friends welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat West Bengal India this is a traumatic cataract the patient is a 10 year old boy the patient came to me about three weeks ago with perforating corneal injury I did the corneal repair now after three weeks I have taken up this case for cataract surgery the patient is a brave boy he is under peribulbar anesthesia he is not under general anesthesia this is the main incision just posterior to the limbus this is a 2.8 millimeter incision with a steel keratome and now I make another incision about two and a half clock hours away and this is about 1.8 millimeter incision on the left side and now I inject a little bit of adrenaline and then inject visco in this case the iris is adherent to the cornea and most of the areas actually from one end to the other end the iris is adherent to the cornea so I inject visco and now I take vana scissor and cut the adhesion between the iris and the cornea the addition is very tough inferiorly so I have to just cut it I cannot disinsert it then it will cause iridodialysis so the iris has been separated from the corneal wound and now I take this Simco cannula 23G Simco and aspirate the cortex in three weeks most of the cortex has got aspirated and very little cortex was there and now My plan is to see if the posterior capsule is intact all around. I can see only the upper part of the capsule. Most of the capsule inferiorly I cannot see. So now my plan is to apply to iris hooks just to visualize the posterior capsule all around. So I'm going to make two very small stab incisions. This is on at eight o'clock and this is on more at five o'clock. So two very small incisions and now I take the iris hooks. the silicon guard is retracted the hook retracts the iris and then the silicon guard is advanced and here I can see that the posterior capsule is intact I take another iris hook apply it at 5 o'clock retract and I see that the posterior capsule is intact in most of the places now I take an Y shaped steel instrument which can retract the iris and we can just visualize what is there behind the iris 
So everywhere the posterior capsule is intact. The patient is 10 year old and he will cooperate for ear glazer. He is cooperating for peripheral anesthesia so he will definitely cooperate for ear glazer. So my plan is to do early ear in this case after about three weeks. Now I inject visco and enlarge the main wound little bit so that the cartilage can go in easily. And this is a sensor multipiece intraocular lens. I have to place the haptics at 5 o'clock, 11 o'clock meridian because there is some addition from 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock. So the lens has gone in, the inferior haptic is behind the iris, but the superior haptic is not going in. So as I push the turling haptic in, the inferior haptic comes out of the sulcus and it is over the iris at this moment. So the trailing haptic goes behind the iris at 4 o'clock and the leading haptic is now over the iris at 10 o'clock. Now I go through the side port with the Sinsky hook I pull the haptic and place it there at 11 o'clock to 10 o'clock. So the lens is nicely placed in the sulcus, I inject visco and now the iris retractors are removed. This is one, it is removed and the other one is also removed. Retract the silicon guard, unhook the pupillary margin, and then remove the iris hook. Now, visco cleaning is done thoroughly. This is an edited video, so I am just showing cleaning with the Simco cannula. After this, I cleaned with bimanual irrigation aspiration, but with Simco cannula, most of the Visco, about 90% of the visco molecules came out. Went behind the eye well, that is over the posterior capsule, then came anteriorly, and most of the visco is removed. This is then I went through the side port and cleaned some more visco. So almost all visco molecules have come out. And now the side port is made with keratome and when we make side ports with keratome most of the time it is self-sealing. We don't have to hydrate the side port. If it is little larger than the instrument that goes in. This is a bit of moxifloxacin and this is the last step. I find that the anterior chamber is nicely formed. There is no leakage from any wound. And now as the last step I inject about 0.3 ml of dexamethasone in the subconjunctival space. These are some post-op pictures taken after 24 hours. Cornea is clear, anti-tumor is nicely formed, very minimal reaction in the anterior chamber.
attachment is almost quiet, probably because of the subconjunctival dexamethasone. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in managing your traumatic cataract cases.